We are here with Robbie Williams of Bowtie Behavior, um, a dope sister based in Harlem, New York. She's doing her thing. She's been in business for a few years. So we are excited that we can carry her bow ties and pocket squares in the self-care basket. And we also have some other things up our sleeves um, here at Noir Boutique. So let me just stop and let you introduce yourself. Looking fly and gorgeous this morning. Just tell us about uh, yourself and bow tie behavior. We'll go from there. Sure, thank you. Um, so thank you for having me, first of all. I'm honored to be here. My name is Robin, or Robbie, um, Robbie Williams, and um, I'm from the Bronx, New York. I'm based in Harlem right now, uh, and I'm the creative bow tie behavior, which started in 2014. Mm -hmm. So started in 2014, and I've looked at your information, says that you were getting ready for a wedding and couldn't find a bow tie, so you just made one yourself. So talk to us about that. Yeah, so it was my best friend's wedding, and um, she, I, I was the maid of honor, and so her sister wanted a bow tie theme. So I was like, okay, let's, you know, let's do it. So we had all the bow tie decorations and things, and so um, last minute we are like, we should all wear bow ties. And it was like, okay, let's find one. So... I went to the stores looking for bow ties and I couldn't find any that um, I felt matched like my style that I would want to wear mm -hmm. or the ones that I did like they were really pricey. So my one of my friends um, who's a designer, she was like, why don't you just make one? And I was like, I don't know how to sew. I don't know how to <laughs> never worn so a bow tie. So you did not know how to sew before then? No, I didn't oh, know how to sew okay. before then other than like sewing a button onto a shirt. Like that's all I knew how to do. Huh. Um, and so I made the bow tie um, out of some fabric scraps that I found and um, went on YouTube, figured out how to do it and um, wore it to the, the um, engagement party and um, they, everyone loved it. And so I just continued doing it from there, just oh. experimenting on like techniques and things like that. Came up with the name like a week later and that was it. <laughs> that was it in 2014. So you literally got inspired by just having a need, a, a simple need. Some of us would have just gone online and found something. You didn't find what you wanted, and you taught yourself how to sew. Did you have a sewing machine in your house, or you just went and grabbed one somewhere? I didn't. I didn't have a sewing machine or anything. And actually, the first, the very first bow tie that I did that I wore to the, the um, party was very thrown together, <laughs> like hand sewn, like parts weren't even fully sewn together. Uh, but I had no um, sewing machine at all. I just put it together. Um, and then eventually I got a, a sewing machine and was able to, you know, figure out patterns and things like that. You had no sewing machine. You just really figured out how to do it. And then two weeks later, you figured out the name Bowtie Behavior and launched the business. And you've been going ever since 2014. Yes. That is super dope. Talk about being inspired, having a, like a quick vision, turning around and making something happen uh, with it. So talk to us a little bit about the fabrics that you choose. Because first of all, when I went to the website and tried to pick which ones for Noir Boutique, I was like, I want them all, first of all. The fabrics <laughs> dope. I want them in for clothes. But how do you choose your fabrics? Um, so I go to fabric stores in the, um, the uh, fashion district in New York. Um, there's a lot of stores to choose from. But then I also like to go to just different mom and pop stores that sell fabric because they usually have fabrics that a lot of people don't have. Um, and so it's a mixture of both. I also, one of my dreams is to travel the world and go to different countries and get fabrics. So that's on my list of what I really want to do. Um, but yeah, it's a fashion district, um, stores, or if I see a um fabric somewhere that's maybe on a shirt or something like that and i just want to convert it into a bow tie i'll make it like a limited edition um but i'm just i'm just inspired by like fabrics and patterns and uh as you can see like vibrant <laughs> like <laughs> colors and patterns and things like that um so yeah i get fabrics from all over 
they are absolutely gorgeous. So do you ever at times go and say, I want uh, a fabric that speaks to, you know, a, a certain uh, representation, like a country in Africa or a certain uh, emotion that you're feeling? Do you ever, are you that intentional about it or is it really you go in and you're inspired on the spot? It's a little bit of both because um, I, I previously, about two years ago, I came out with a, um, a line that was just African fabrics. Um, and each one had a different name. Um, and so, well, all of my bow ties have different names, but, um, it was specifically African fabrics. Um, and it was five or six bow ties in the collection. And so, um, there are times where I will put out like different collections. Like I put out a floral collection. I'll put out a, um, a collection for like a holiday or whatnot. But, um, most of the time i just walk into the store and it's like that one that one and that one <laughs> and so i like my favorite thing to do is just walk through a fabric store even if i didn't my intention wasn't to come and buy fabrics i'll just find myself in a fabric store and just walking through the aisles and picking out the fabrics that i that i like or even taking pictures of fabrics just for inspiration later um, but it's, it's a mixture of both. Sometimes it's an intentional like collection, like this is the look I'm going for. But, um, most of the time it's, um, whatever fabrics I'm drawn to. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad you were drawn to your fabrics. Um, I know Garden Party is one of my favorite and I think, um, you had just launched that when we first started trying to collaborate with Noir Boutique. But let's look at the one, the sets that we have featured in Noir Boutique. As I said, they're in the self-care basket and they're also going to come out in some other collaborations we've not released yet. But um, I love both of these colors in, in terms of what do they speak to you, right? Because we didn't talk about a name for either one of them. So what made you choose these two fabrics and what do they say to you? Yeah, um, so just the, the patterns, one, and um, the vibrancy of the color. And then also the fact that like I, I like bright colors, but then I know there are, um, there are folks who like darker colors. So I still try to stick to, you know, speak to both. Um, I like the fact that these patterns, no matter how you wear them or whatever, no matter what pattern variation you get in your bow tie, it's still going to look, um, pretty like similar mm -hmm. um and so the the more orange yellowish one that one i named coral um just just came to my mind it just made me think of coral under the sea mm -hmm. and then the other one i named zebra just because it reminded me of like a colorful maybe like zebra that she would see in a cartoon or yes that that makes a hundred <laughs> yeah, so like usually I um I don't come up with the name until after I make the bow tie and I see it and then it's like okay that's what your name is gonna be. Mm -hmm. So um but yeah that's what drew drew me to those patterns. So switching gears just a little bit. So you've been in business um, since 2014. Were you an entrepreneur prior to that time or were you doing something completely different? No, I actually was, um, no, I was an entrepreneur before then. I was a college basketball coach. Um, I played college basketball at the University of D.C. And um, I ended up going back there after graduation and coaching for about five years. Um, and then it was around 2014, 2015 that I decided to shift gears and um, move back to New York and um, pursue bow tie behavior full time. Mm -hmm. um, so before then, I was in a completely different <laughs> career and everything. Um, yeah, and I just said, you know, this is this is what I want to do. So <laughs> I just did it. What position did you play, by the way? Because I played in high school. I didn't play. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was a shooting guard. Oh, me too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> um, okay, let me get back on track. So, um, so you decide to leave DC, leave coaching, and go back to New York and start this business. Did you get immediate support, or were your family and friends like, "Wait a minute, Robbie, what what's going on?" Um, no surprise. I thought I was gonna get some pushback, but surprisingly, they were just like, "Okay." Like, I guess, I guess they realize I'm that type of person that's just like, I'm gonna go with what. I'm being pushed to, like, I'm going to go with whatever I, my vibe is going towards. And I always, I always say to people, like, the timing of my 
moves may be random to outside people, but I've put a lot of thought into it before <laughs> I've done it. So it wasn't just like a, I woke up the, one day and was like, oh, I'm quitting. Like it was something I, I knew I was going to do six months before I made the move, but I initially was going to move to Atlanta instead of moving back to New York. Um, but things didn't work out that way. And I ended up going back to New York and, and doing it. So, um, so yeah, I, my family was fully supportive and that was, that was something that was great because I ended up moving back in with my mom for a short period of time. So that was a plus. Yes. Um, but yeah, they were very supportive. Good. That's good to hear. Um, so your immediate community was very supportive. What about being a black woman entrepreneur making bow ties, which isn't necessarily what we would traditionally think of as a, a kind of a black woman owned business. Um, did you get immediate support from maybe the broader community? Um, yeah, I, I did actually, um, when I, when I got back to New York, I ended up applying to a incubator, pro, a small business like incubator program with Wix.com, which is where, um, my my website is hosted from and i ended up getting into their um small business um program and then they ended up selecting me for a national um commercial tv commercial that ran for the entire year and it and they chose um, bow tie behavior out of like thousands of wix small business companies and i think i was like one of like five or ten companies that they chose and so um that happened maybe a month or two after getting back so it was just like immediately like okay this is the right move like i made the right move yeah so yeah the support was there almost immediately so it, it really helped me um like solidify the fact that i had made the correct choice you know yeah so have there been any like pivotal moments in owning the business and where you say okay i'm i'm really catching my stride i know i'm in the right place you know, some type of uh, magazine where you're like, you know what, now I'm, I'm here. This is, this is it. Uh, it would have to be that, the Wix commercial. That was like a major, like <laughs> major, major. And it, it aired for an entire year. It was like 2015. Yes, yeah, 2015 it aired. And it was so cool because I, I would have people calling me up like, oh, I just saw you on CNN or I just saw you during the, halftime of the NFL like it was on like major channels so it was like really really <laughs> it was overwhelming but it was amazing and then it gave a really big boost to my business as far as like um, sales and just advertising and now people see me and like I do a lot of other things but people know me for bow tie behavior more than anything else um, and so that was definitely a great experience um, working with Wix in in that way um so yeah that was a pivotal moment no I guess I think that was the biggest one <laughs> I mean that's pretty darn big <laughs> you know especially when you think out of thousands of applicants and you're one of five like that's, yeah that was pretty so, yeah, that was pretty big um so how has the pandemic affected your business I definitely had to adjust as far as um because usually if I get a big order I uh, contract out um, and have someone else, um, help. So, um, and so that one, the major like wholesale sales has slowed down, but also, um, if I do get orders, I pretty much have to do them all myself, which I have been doing for the years, but, uh, recently in the past like year or so, I've been contracting folks out to do the bow ties so that, I can free up time to do like advertising and things like that. So I've definitely had to um, do more bow ties on my own since the pandemic just to save money. Um, and yeah, just trying to find also trying to find ways to stand out from the crowd because now everyone's shopping online. And um, so and you see like advertisements every two seconds. So, so doing things that would help me stand out um so i started doing instagram live videos where i'm like actually making the bow ties on instagram live and i have people like really interested you know checking in there like oh i didn't know you actually made them or it's good to see your process blah 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 so like interacting in that way and just trying to find ways to um 
to be different, like doing bow tie tutorials online and things like that. So um, yeah, it's really forced me to, well, not forced me like in a bad way, but it's really allowed me to, uh, to come up with solutions on how to be, how to stand out from the crowd, being a um, small business, being the only employee in the business. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Employee and the owner and shipping and receiving, like it's all you, right? You wear all those. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know, and, and we're just now meeting um, and met over the pandemic, you know, when, when I launched my business, which whether or not that's crazy or not, I launched a business during the pandemic. But I can say just hearing your story, I'm not surprised that you've been able to pivot, you know, going from not being able to sew to just making something to get through an engagement party to now having this amazing business being recognized by Wix. So um, kudos to you. And that is such an inspiration. So um, if we can just maybe go there for a second, what would you say to other people who have an idea and they're just kind of maybe not sure if it's something they should pursue? What would you say to those people who kind of get in that itch of, of what to do with those ideas? Um, I, I would say to write down, I'm a big note taker. So I would say write down everything that you're interested in and why you're interested in it and then which one you're drawn to the most and then and then pursue that and then if it's because I don't like I don't like to tell people just to pursue one thing because I feel like we have so many talents that who's to say which one is going to actually blow up into something you know so I would say to pursue the one that you're most drawn to because that's the one you're going to stick with through the ups and downs because there are going to be ups and downs. <laughs> so you want to choose something that you're in it for. Um, of course, we all want to make money, but it want, you want it to be something that you really are passionate about, something that you really enjoy doing, um, regardless of you know the ebbs and flows of like owning a business. Um, so yeah, definitely write everything down and figure out like what it is that you're really drawn to and what it is that you would you know you would be able to do and stick out um regardless of, of like money mm -hmm. and then that is you know what i would say to go with and then if that doesn't work and you can always move on to something else but i'm always i'm a big proponent of like at least trying <laughs> so yes I am taking so many mental notes. If I had a notebook <laughs> right here, I'd be writing it down. Um, so you mentioned that you are kind of involved in a lot more than bow tie behavior. Talk to us about what's next um, for for Robbie, and then we'll talk about bow tie behavior. Yeah. yeah so um, I currently got my real estate license um, in February of of this year. I forget what year we're in because it feels like the year. <laughs> like, I don't know. But February of this year, I got my real estate license um, in New York. And um, so I've been helping my family out with um, my family's real estate and also taking on custom um, clients as well. Um, and what's next for me is I want to um, get into real estate investing, which is um, what my grandfather did when... Um, when he got to New York in the seventies. And so, um, I really want to take on like real estate investing. Um, and yeah, that's probably the, the major goal right now. Um, and then as far as bow tie behavior, I, I've been bouncing between like, do I want a brick and mortar? Do I want to like put all my energy towards reaching that goal or do I want a um a mobile boutique mm -hmm. so I'm kind of like uh, I don't know which one because I yeah so that's where I'm <laughs> those are two big circles around my head right now yeah. well come on Robbie we know you can end up doing all of it right <laughs> so, yeah, I know yeah yes yeah. so, so I expect to see the brick and mortar and I definitely expect to see the <laughs> boutique <laughs> yeah you got it um so again, we, we're we really just happy with Noir Boutique that you were so gracious when I reached out. You didn't know me from Adam. I could have been some random person, you know, <laughs> um, trying to take advantage. But I really appreciate just how responsive and engaging you've been. Um, you actually selected these fabrics just for Noir Boutique. And I'm sure, you know, again, started to market them to mm -hmm. your broader customer base. But I really appreciate that. 
Um, and I'm excited for our customers to um, be able to rock these dope bow ties and pocket squares when they purchase the self-care baskets. And like I said, the other collaborations that we have coming. Um, so if there's anything left that you'd like to say, maybe a last statement or so to, to everyone who's watching, how they can find you, please let us know your IG and your website so that our customers can know how to get in touch with you going forward. Sure. Um, yeah. So my the website is bowtiebehavior.com where you can shop online, um, see bow tie tutorials and things like that. And um, on Instagram, it's bowtiebehavior. Um, on Twitter, it's also bowtiebehavior. And on Facebook, it's bowtiebehavior. Um, and my personal Instagram is real estate underscore Robbie with two B's. Um, and that's basically it. Yeah, that's how you can find me. All right. Well, thank you so much. They can also find you again at Noir Boutique in the self-care baskets. Um, and so we really, really look forward to seeing you continue to grow and to blossom and inspiring people. So thank you so much and blessings to you, sis. Thank you so much for this. And thank you for your for ordering for your boutique. Thank you for the interview and the support. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.